sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Me in uh, Niger, in Nigeria, West Africa, in Africa. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I will receive. And you will find in your life tonight that God is so good. Not just to the world, but to you. To me. To me. God will be so good tonight. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name for what you have done, for what you are doing, for what you'll continue to do. Lord, we thank you. We praise your name. And we come with great expectation, knowing that you are the God of all possibilities. And there is nothing too hard for you. We're asking tonight that your touch transform, turn around every life in Jesus' name. The request we have, the desire we have, the prayer we pray and everything we're expecting that tonight your power will get everything done in every life everywhere in jesus name confirm your power that can do all things confirm that in every life we know it's done it is done in jesus name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we look at Psalm 107. And we're reading from verse 20. Psalm 107. Reading from verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and delivered them. He sent his word and saved them. He sent his word and sanctified them. Sanctified them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It's the word. He sent his word. He empowered them. He sent his word. He did a creative miracle in their lives. The miracle were what? Of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of sanctification and holiness, the miracle will want of the power of the Lord resident within us. That miracle comes for the body, for the soul, for the spirit by the word. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction deliverance has come to you and that deliverance comes through his word and as you hear that word accept that word internalize personalize that word embrace that word and claim that that word is for you your miracle will descend upon you there in jesus name i'm talking to you tonight on the wonderful possibilities of the word of jesus the wonderful possibilities of the word of jesus i'm looking at three things here number one recovery through the sending of his word recovery from every sickness, from every infirmity, recovery through the sending of his word. Number two, receiving from his signs and wonders. Signs and wonders tonight. Amen. Amen. In your life, signs and wonders. In your body, signs and wonders. In your soul, in your spirit, signs and wonders. And concerning all your prayers, the answer will come from heaven with signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Receiving, I will receive. 
I will receive. The rain has taken your voice away. Receiving from his signs and wonders. Number three, relying on the sufficiency of his word. Relying, resting, believing, holding on to the sufficiency of his word. We don't have to go outside his word because it's the word that brings the power of heaven upon our lives and so we can rely on the sufficiency of his word and his works he'll work in your life tonight in your soul in your spirit in your personality in your mind everything that needs to be done even a creative miracle will happen in your life in jesus name relying on the sufficiency of his word and of his works we're looking at number one number one is recovery i will recover i will recover when you know that his word comes to you and that the way he sends his word and the avenue and the channel and the passage by which the miracle will come to you is the word then you pay attention you open your heart you open your mind you open your ears you open your spirit to the word that enters in and does something unforgettable in your life recovery through the sending of his word in Matthew chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 8 Matthew chapter 8 we're looking at verse 8 the centurion answered and said Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only speak the word only and everything i need will be granted it says and my servant shall be healed tonight your servant will be healed <laughs> you say preacher i don't have any servant yes you do your hand is to serve you your servant your feet that will serve you and take you from here to there. Your mind is to serve you. Your brain is to serve you. And everything you have in your body there is to serve you. And your heart, I mean the physical heart, pumping the blood and sending the blood to all the veins and every part is to serve you. Your kidney is to serve you. And your lungs are to serve you. What could you do if your lungs will not serve you and you cannot breathe well? And whatever has happened to any part of your body that ought to serve you. And the hand is withered cannot carry anything, cannot serve you, and your feet are lame, or you have those broken bones, and therefore you don't have the strength, and your legs cannot serve you, and you're breathing, you're breathing up and down, as if you're gasping for air, as if you're going to die, and all that cannot serve you, and then the place where you ought to sit down, you're having piled there, you cannot stand up, you cannot sit down, and you cannot lie down very well, even to sleep all those parts of your bodies that ought to serve you and they're not serving you well speak the word and the members of my body will be healed yeah. tonight you will recover yeah. and every every impossibility in your life every challenge in your life tonight as the word of power and the word of healing and the word of deliverance reaches you there the moment you hear that moment your healing will take effect the lord will touch your life 
And the man, and the man knew that. And the man did not, you know, he didn't have to cry and cry and cry. I saw that, uh, you know, last night, as you we were going to pray for healing, there were people that were crying and crying and crying. And it doesn't come by the crying. It is by receiving the word of God. The word of God comes to you, and that word brings healing, and that word brings salvation, and that word brings deliverance into your life. The man did not stay there crying, crying, crying. My servant is sick, and that one is sick. Oh Lord, are you not going to help me? I'm holding on to the horns of the altar, and then they're doing some gymnastic and running here, running there, and racing up this and racing up that, and then speaking out aloud, disturbing every other person. The man said, I don't need all that. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be here tonight. Healing comes to you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go. And he goes. He said, I'm a man. I understand authority. And I know that what I have comes through my word. The ability I have. The skill I have and the, and the power to move a man from there to there is not in the physical. Everything is in my world. I'm a centurion. I have a hundred soldiers under me. And I say the word, the word, the word. And I say to this one, go. And he goeth. And I say to another, come. And he cometh. I don't have to use, you know, force. And I don't even have to cry. When I want that soldier to come, I'm a centurion. I have the authority over them. And my word carries power, anointing, and authority. And all I need to do is say, go. And he goes to do what I told him to do. Come and he comes, and then he says to my servant, I say, do this, and he doeth it. You know what the man was saying? The man was saying, I have 100 soldiers under me, and none of those soldiers will disobey or disregard my words any of them, 100. And I say, go. He has to go. And he says, you are Lord. You already called him Lord. You have power. You have authority. As I have power and authority over 100 soldiers, I know, I believe, you have authority over 100% of all sicknesses. Named or not named, in the medical encyclopedia, or no one has written about it in life, you have 100% of authority over all sicknesses. So, as I say, and the soldiers to go, as I say, and that soldiers to come, speak. The word only. That man had faith. I have faith. Not crying faith. I have faith. Somebody there, I have faith. Not crying faith. Your child, you want breakfast. Your mother, your father has the responsibility of providing the breakfast. And Jesus said, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. Then he said, everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Which 
of you having a son and he asks you for bread you give him a stone if he asks for fish will you give him a serpent if he's asking for egg will you give him a scorpion if you human beings be so evil you are you give good things to your children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give you good things that you are asking when we want breakfast we don't come to our mother and say, I want breakfast, I want breakfast. And we start crying. And then we cry and cry and say, I, Mother, I will not let you go. Today, 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 I will not let you go except you give me breakfast. Your mother will think that something is wrong there. But you come and you ask. And it's his duty, responsibility to give you that bread, that healing, that deliverance, and that miracle is coming your way today. So, let's get rid of this crying faith and have confident faith, confident faith. If I may but touch his garment, I will be healed. Confident faith. Let's stop all this crying faith and let's have a commanding faith. Like Joshua on the battlefield, he said, son, stand there. And he stood there commanding faith. Let's stop all the crying faith and have Caleb faith. I am 80 years and five. And I'm still as strong as I was 40 years ago. Give me this mountain. Let's have that. Don't just stay at the primary level crying, crying faith. Let's come and have covenant faith. It says, my covenant will I not break. I have said unto you, this is what I will do. And we have the covenant faith. We have covenant with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that covenant faith will do something in every life. In my life. In my life. The Lord has a covenant with us. It says whatsoever you ask in the name of Jesus, he will do. With that covenant, how do I come to God? And I'm, you know, I go back to the you know, beginning of the Bible. I will not let you go. Today, 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 you must heal me. We've gone beyond that. Let's have conquering faith. Conquering faith is the word the centurion had. And he said... You don't even have to come to my house. You don't have to come and touch the servant. You don't have to come and do anything. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Tonight, I speak the word of power from here. It gets to you there and you get it in Jesus' name. And then let us have the creative faith. The creative faith, God says, I will do a new thing. And it says now, it shall spring forth. Will you not know it? I will even make waters to flow in the desert. And then it says in the wilderness, your wilderness will blossom. Let's have the creative faith that God himself has said, I will create something new that had never been there before. It's what that confidence will come and will say, Lord, we have the confident faith. Lord, we have the commanding faith. Lord, we have the Caleb's faith. Lord, we have the covenant faith. Lord, we have the conquering faith. And Lord, we have the creative faith. And something good will happen in your life. In my life. In my life. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Because I say to this one, go, and he goeth. And to this one, come, and he cometh. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said 
unto them that followed verily I say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Israel what did he say that those who are praying at all and who are still holding on I will not let you go I will not let you go the man said I don't need to do that speak the word only and my servant shall be healed and Jesus said this is great faith I have not found so great faith no not in Israel look at verse 13 in verse 13 and Jesus said unto the centurion, go. That's what the man had said. The man said, I'm a centurion. I have authority over 100 soldiers. And when I say go, that man, that soldier has to go. And Jesus said, according to your language, according to your expectation, According to your faith in my authority and power, go thy way and as thou hast believed. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. So be it done unto thee. I lost my amen there. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. This hour, this moment, this night, you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Your heart will be healed. Your spirit will be healed. Your soul will be healed. Your entire family can be healed tonight. Recovery through the sending of His word. Number two here. Number two is receiving from his signs and wonders receiving from his signs and wonders look at acts chapter 2 in acts chapter 2 reading from verse 22 it says ye men of israel hear the words hear the words hear the words because your blessing comes through the word. It doesn't come by shaking. It doesn't come by crying. It doesn't come by rolling on the ground. It doesn't come by burning anything. It doesn't come by drinking anything. Your miracle comes through the word. And so Peter said, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. That's fine now. A man approved of God among you. You will know that in any profession, you need license. Even the drivers need license. And the doctors need license. And the engineers need the license to practice. And any profession you have, you need that approval from the authority. And if you don't have the approval, let's say, for instance, somebody is a medical doctor, he doesn't have the license to practice. And he's practicing, and the authorities know about it, they will come and close down that illegal clinic. But if he has the license, if he has the authority, then he operates freely. And Jesus Christ approved of God he has the approval of heaven he has the power from heaven he has the anointing from heaven he has the license all over the world the Lord of the whole universe he is the one approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs where why will you go to another one that doesn't have that kind of universal approval it says which god did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves already know we've heard so many miracles and so many signs and wonders and so many breakthroughs that god has done through the name of Jesus, you know, God did by him. 
in the midst of us as she yourselves also know and today you'll experience it signs and wonders in your life signs and wonders at the end of the message and we pray whatever it is you mention and you say God do this for me your miracle has come your solution has come because we call on Jesus that has approval he has the license he has the power he has the authority he has the anointing from heaven look at verse 42 in verse 42 it says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers then in verse 43 it says and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs many wonders and signs were done by the apostles many signs and wonders were done by the apostles how did he do that well you know already because in chapter 3 Peter said look on all silver and gold have I none but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk the signs and wonders were done by that name and the name is still as fresh today as it was on that day. That name had not lost any power. That name has not lost any creative miracle. Walking, wonder walking, miracle. That name is still there. And as you call on the name tonight, salvation will come. Yeah. Healing will come. Yeah. Deliverance will come power from on high will come upon you in Jesus name upon me what you came here for tonight you will receive and all you need to do is that as we mention the name of Jesus you connect with that name you believe in that name and you have confidence in that name miracle in your life signs and wonders in your life creative power will enter into that body and what appeared impossible in the past will become possible tonight look at acts chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 12 acts chapter 5 verse 12 and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people tonight many signs and wonders as we pray Amen. Many signs and wonders as you look up to heaven and you say, God, I am here. And I know that Christ has finished it already. It is finished. It is finished. My sins finished. My problems finished. My sicknesses finished. My tears will not add any value to the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Could my tears forever flow? And my zeal, no respite, no. All these for sin cannot atone. It's not my tears. It's not rolling on the ground. It's not crying, it is the blood, the blood of the Lamb. And when you have faith in that blood that was shed for you on the cross of Calvary, and you know that Jesus said, it is finished. You know, once we mention that name, that sickness has to come out. That problem has to get out of your life. Signs and wonders happen on the basis of the name of Jesus, the authority of Jesus, and the blood that Jesus already shed, he died for you. So you will not die a sinner's death anymore. Amen? 
He paid the whole price. I don't have to pay any other price with tears and with crying. He paid the price. And because he paid the price, everything now is mine. <laughs> Say it for yourself. You will do it in your life in Jesus' name. And then we're told in verse 14, look at verse 14. It says, And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women. In verse 15, it says, In verse 15, is so much that they brought forth the sick to the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. The shadow of Peter, all those sick people who are just there and they didn't see Jesus in person, in the physical, but they saw Jesus in those apostles that he had said and he said once he passes by, I'll be all right. Once I see him, I'll be all right. I see Jesus in him. I see power, the power of Christ in him. And once I see that, I'll be all right. Tonight, as we see Jesus in the world, you'll be all right. I will be all right. Blind eyes will open. The lame will rise and walk. Yeah. And the people who are helpless, hopeless, powerless in sin, they tried and tried and tried. And they could not overcome the sinful nature, the sinful habit, and the sinful character. As we see Jesus tonight as your Savior, all that helplessness in sin, everything will vanish away. He saves us as we see him. He heals us as we see him. He delivers us as we see him. Tonight, you will see Jesus as your savior. And he's passing by. He went about doing good and healing and saving all that were oppressed of the devil. All that were captives of the devil. For God was with him. And he's still there tonight. Jesus can the same yesterday and today and forever. And then it says that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And then in verse 16, in verse 16 it says, And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed everyone. And they were healed, everyone. And they were healed, everyone. You know, Christ is still the same. And what he did in years gone by, days gone by, he's still doing today. But we must have the same attitude that those sick people at that time uh, that they heard we must have uh, the same confidence that those sick people at that time uh, that they had the name of Jesus that was the finality of their expectation and did Peter didn't have to say one by one blind eyes open one by one deaf ears open one by one that they, they broke him bones joined together one by one he mentioned my problem he mentioned my problem no look at that it says all the people that were vexed with evil spirits some clean spirits all the people that were sick that they just brought them and then the final prayer was made and they were healed everyone 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 there 
Everyone there. Everyone over there. You healed tonight in Jesus' name. As you come with the same attitude, with the same disposition, with the same expectation, and with the same confidence that they had trusting the Lord. That as prayers are made tonight, I mention my problem to the Lord, whether the preacher mentions it or not, I mention it to the Lord, and the Lord's at heart, the expectation of my heart, it will be done. And they were healed, everyone, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I say shall be saved. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed, delivered tonight in Jesus' name. With the candidate for the miracle tonight, candidate for the signs and wonders tonight, is coming your way. You will receive in Jesus' name. I come to number three here. Number three, relying on the sufficiency of his works. His word, his work. Because he did the works by his word. And his word is sufficient. His work is sufficient. The work at Calvary. For redemption, the work at Calvary for our salvation, the work at Calvary for our healing, the work at Calvary for our deliverance, the sufficiency of his works. I don't have to add holy water to his works. I don't have to add the burning of a candle to his works. I don't have to add the oil to his works. I don't have to add my tears and crying to his word. We don't have to add anything because he said it is finished. And tonight it is finished. And as you come to the Lord or the confidence that he has purchased your salvation, he has purchased your redemption, and that you can have forgiveness right there. You can have salvation right there. You can have the righteousness he purchased on the cross of Calvary right there. And you can have the blessing, overflowing blessing of the Lord right there. As you do that tonight, the Lord will give you what he paid for on the cross of Calvary. Look at this. We're looking at John chapter 5, verse 17. John chapter 5, verse 17. But Jesus answered them, My Father walketh hitherto, and I walk. My Father, the God of heaven, our Creator, He did a creative work. He walketh hitherto. And I walk. He said the same as my father walks. And he walks immediately. The people ask in prayer. My father walketh hitherto. And I walk. And the father had walked without any failure. The son, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Deliverer, and the Healer. He will walk in your life tonight without any failure. Amen. Amen. And when it works, it works for the people that have confident faith in him. If I may but touch his garment, that's all I need. I don't need to cry. I have confident faith in him that if I ask anything, According to his word, it is declaration, I will be healed. And you have that kind of confident faith, commanding faith, 
It says, anything concerning my sons, command ye me. And you just look at the word of God and you say, Lord, this is what you said. And I'm going to carry it through. The Lord will honor your dependence upon his word in Jesus' name. You have that conquering faith like the conquering centurion that said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed and then we we'll speak the word of Christ from here the word of power from here the word of authority from here the word anointed by the Holy Ghost from here you'll be healed and delivered and saved in Jesus name you come like Caleb and you have Caleb's faith he wasn't struggling he wasn't fighting he wasn't crying and Caleb said Give me this mountain, I will subdue this mountain. Then that's what we need as we come to this level now of realizing what Christ has done. And we say, I will subdue. You'll subdue every mountain in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you have the covenant faith. God making in a a covenant with us. And it says, my covenant will I not break. The covenant of a salvation that whosoever will call on the basis of what Christ has done. And I say, Lord, this is your covenant. I'll make a new covenant for them. I'll write my word in their heart. And you come with the understanding of that covenant something good covenant blessing covenant healing covenant deliverance covenant miracle covenant signs and wonders will be done in your life in jesus name that's the kind of faith the lord is expecting and that is conquering faith that you come tonight you are not wavering you are not doubting. You are not moving here and there. You know that your faith tonight will conquer sin. My faith tonight will conquer sin. My faith tonight will conquer sickness. My faith tonight will conquer satanic affliction. It's coming. I said it's coming. And then you have creative faith that whatever is absent in your body, the Lord says, I do a new thing. I make a new creation. And then you become a new creature in Jesus' name. It's available for you, for me, for everyone. It's available. My father walketh either to and I walk. Look at chapter 14 of John. John chapter 14. And I'm reading there from verse 10. It says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The Father that dwelleth in me, is resident in me, he doeth the work. And that Father, that God of heaven and earth, he says, I am God, I change not. What he did before, he will do in your life. He forgave, he'll forgive you. He saved, he'll save you. He healed, he'll heal you. He delivered, he ransomed them. He will deliver you and ransom you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 11 there. Verse 11 says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12, verse 12 then says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. That's all you need to do tonight for salvation. That's what you need to do 
for healing. That's what you need to do to receive the spectacular signs and wonders. That's all you have to do. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Somebody shout amen. amen. The miracle of God in your life. In First John chapter 3 verse 5. First John chapter 3 verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. That's why he came. That's why he died. That's why he rose again after three days in the earth. It says we know that he, Christ, our Savior, Christ, our healer, Christ, our redeemer, we know that he was manifested to take away our sins. That's what he came to do. That's what he wants to do. And that's what he delights in doing. He takes away sin. And as I realize that that's his program, that's his power, that's his purpose, that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Then in verse 6, in verse 6, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You come to him and you abide in him and he abides in you. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone opens the door of his heart, I will come in. When he abides in you and you abide in him, he gives you the power to live in newness of life. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. That person still ought to come. Am I saved? Am I not saved? You need to come to Christ. Am I living an overcoming life or a defeated life? Just come to Christ. Have I surrendered my strength and my power? And my ability to resist the devil. Have I surrendered that to the devil? No argument, just come to Christ. When Christ comes in, salvation comes in. And his power will come in and you will have the salvation, the forgiveness, and the freedom of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Little children, young people, and adults too, little children having little understanding in the things of God, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And then in verse Age, it says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. What does that mean? Is the devil that inspires and influences people to sin. And if you are his follower, his servant, then he'll say, uh, you know, put the wrong hand where the right hand should be. And because you belong to him, he's in control. But the control of Satan is broken away from your life today. He is in control to say the wrong thing, to do the wrong thing, to go the wrong direction. And when we were with him and we were under him, we couldn't say no to him. But now Jesus comes and he breaks the mastery of Satan away from your life. And then when you are saved, you are no more a servant and Satan... He's dumb. He doesn't know that he has lost you. You are no more his slave. He says, come on, do this. He'll say, no. He said, I tell you, who are you? I now belong to Christ. Somebody there, I now belong to Christ. I now belong to Christ. And when we don't belong to the devil anymore, he might shout, he might, you know, want to uh, kind of push us into anything. We say, don't try that because I belong to Christ and Christ will deal with you. Christ will deal with him. 
the lion of the tribe of Judah will deal with that Satan. And then it says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. In your life today, Christ will destroy the works of the devil. And whatever work, it might come from behind, it might come from a secret place, it might come from a habit, whatever. The Lord Christ is here tonight. He will destroy the works of the devil. Everything you've done before wrong, sinful, and the devil was piling it up. And Satan was saying, I made you do that. I made you do that. I made you do that. All that that the devil is building in your life and piling on and piling up. Christ has come tonight. It will blow down everything that the devil has done in your life. And the sickness... And the infirmity and the depression and the evil the Lord has come tonight because for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil say amen, amen. disobedience is the work of the devil is that the work of God defiance sinful boldness satanic boldness defiance is the work of the devil or is that the work of God no. defilement is the work of the devil or is defilement the work of God no. drunkenness the work of the devil that will make an honorable man, honorable woman, the vomiting and then lie down in that vomit. That cannot be the work of God. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil away from your life in Jesus' name. Heaven is ready for you. Yeah. Are you ready for him? Yeah. God is ready for you. Are you ready for him? Yeah. Christ the Savior. Christ the Redeemer. Christ the one that will forgive and cleanse and set you free. He is ready. Are you ready for him? He stands at the door of your heart. And he's knocking. And if anyone hear his voice and opens the door of his heart, he will come in. And once he comes in, the Savior comes in, salvation has come in. The healer comes in, healing has come in. Redeemer comes in, redemption has come in. Deliverer comes in, and deliverance has come in. Now, I said now. I said now. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want that forgiveness? You want that freedom, and you know that everything is in Christ the Savior. Christ the Savior. And you know, the moment I open my heart and I say, Lord Jesus, come in. Come in today. Come in to stay. I receive you as my Savior. Salvation will happen immediately. Say amen. amen. It's about and it's closed. You want to open the door of your heart for the Savior to come in. For the one who will forgive you to come in. For the one, the guilt remover, that you remove the guilt of your heart. You want him to come in, raise up that hand and say, Lord, now 
I understand. The moment I say yes to you, and I open the doors of my heart, and I pour out my heart unto you, and I confess, and I forsake, and I repent, I know that your salvation will come. Raise up that hand. God bless you there. Online, the Lord is talking to you. Raise up your hand there. Over the radio, over the TV, anywhere you are. Raise up your hand. In any congregation you are, or in the family where you are watching together, raise up your hand there and say, I know for this purpose, Christ was manifested that he might destroy all the sins, all the defilement, the works of the devil. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up in the name of the Lord. You are raising up your hand. You want his salvation. You want his forgiveness. Wherever you are, just stand up. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. He is going to bless you with salvation. He is going to bless you with forgiveness. We're going to pray together now as you're raising up your hand and you're standing up. Father, in the name of Jesus, you say, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And these ones have raised up their hands and called upon your name, saying with confident faith that they know that Christ and Christ alone is the only Savior. Lord, save them in Jesus' name. Forgive them in Jesus' name. All those works of disobedience, of defiance, of defilement that the devil had raised up in their lives. Crush the works of the devil in their lives. Blot out all the works of the devil in their lives and set them free. New life, new creation, doing everyone in Jesus' name. Let your spirit be a witness in their heart. They are now children of God. Confirmation of conversion. Confirmation of salvation. Confirmation of redemption in every life right now. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another amen. A global amen. amen. Keep on standing as you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. He has come in. And he came in with salvation. And you have the salvation of the Lord. Our counselors are there. And they will help you. Once you have a record of you, you're giving your life to the Lord. And the Lord himself will make you to stay and abide in that salvation in Jesus' name. We call on our pastor to take over now. Amen. We have new people that the Lord has brought to the families of kingdom of God. Heaven is rejoicing. We should rejoice also for their coming to the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen? We bless God for what God has helped you to do tonight by believing the word of gospel of salvation. Now you are born again. All over the globe you are raising up your hand. You will now begin to move on and keep standing up. And all our workers, choir, leaders, all of us, let's quickly move around and help them to fill the forms. Give them that decision slip and allow them, if they know how to write, let them write details, names, put your full name in capital letter. Then your address. 
describe where you stay or your workplace or nearby places at a market, schools, or other places that is well known where you are, then give us your phone numbers. You are now a believer, a child of God. You will not lie to give wrong address and wrong phone number. If you don't have, there is maybe a neighbor, a friend, or a brother, a sister around you that you normally use their numbers. You can give us. We will contact you through there. Let's quickly do that as we get all your details. You are online. You will see a clear link that you will open up and you will fill those forms and send it online, either through WhatsApp or through the numbers that we will give you. That you try to do that. Ushers, leaders, counselors that were trained, quickly be involved so that we get all their details as quick as possible. As we are doing that, you know, we are having converts rally. Tomorrow will be a great day for all those that have given their life to Jesus. Right from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yesterday, and today, we have special convert banquet lunch hour with the Lord by 3 p.m. tomorrow. So be available at the back of the hall there, back of our place, over there in the tent at the back is where we are having that classes with you. Be there and you'll get a lot of the materials. You will be helped. You will be assisted on how to live a victorious Christian life. We are doing that as we are praying, expecting miracles tonight. Expect the power of God tonight. We will be praying along and say, Lord, tonight is my night. I have had the word of faith. I believe your word. I believe your servant. I am going on with my own miracle. Begin to pray for yourself. Pray for those you brought around here. That God will visit everyone. Counselors, let's be fast about this. Get all their details. Get their phone numbers. Their full names. And their addresses. You can see in the form. Are there people that are first person giving their life to Christ? Is it the first time? Or are they now restoring back to faith? Indicate it for us. So that we know the type of help we give to those that are fresh believers. And those that might have lost their salvation. And they are coming back now. Let's get those details in the forms. We are waiting for you. Do what is fast so that we have this program. Remember, tonight is a great night for us. Tomorrow is the last night for this crusade. You will be around. You will be available. You will bring a lot of people that are waiting so that they will come and be blessed for the grand finale of the crusade. Then tomorrow, we have the last day for the ministers, professionals, business people, entrepreneurs. We have the last day for this very conference. And it's coming up by 7 a.m. A deeper life campground over there in Chachanga in Abuja Road. Be there on time. We have been there enjoying ourselves, Christian workers, ministers of the gospel, and you are businessmen and women. Come and get the strategies, the method, and the ways how to move forward and how to believe God for all 
the God of possibilities, releasing his promises. We should know also the converts. We have general and real gathering together of all the converts worldwide, especially in the Alpha location, Minae. We are going to have it on Sunday, 9th October, by 4 p.m. at Shororo Deeper Life Secretariat, Headquarter Church there. There, we are having the banquet with you. And in the region, in Niger State, in all the regional headquarters, we are having that banquet together. It's a time we come together, share together, see how to help you, give you materials that will build up your life. Online, brethren, you have to fill the form and submit it online. As you do that, you will be blessed. Either you send it through SMS or WhatsApp. This is the number. Plus 234-91544-49263. Take the number again. Either you send through WhatsApp or through SMS. Plus 234-9154-49263. Six three, do it. We'll have your details. You will be helped also in your new fan faith. This thing we are doing, we are doing it all over the globe, all over Africa, all over the states in Nigeria, all over U.S., U.K., East Africa, Middle East, Europe, everywhere. Fill these forms and send it to us. So that we have your details and how to help you. Counsel us. If you are finished, can you wave the flags now? Because we are waiting for the miracles. Waiting for the blessing from an eye. Those on the left side, if you are finished, can you wave the flags that you have done with the counseling? Let's be fast about it. What up from the middle? If you are finished, wave the flags for us to see. Not yet. Out of my right side. If you have done, can you wave the flags, please? So that we know that you are finished. It's not yet done, so let's be fast about it. When you finish, go to the next person. Don't leave anyone unattended to. Every soul is important at the presence of God. They have given their life to the Lord. Heaven is rejoicing. We are also rejoicing for their newfound faith. Let's do our best to help them now. Counselors, let's be fast. If you have finished one, move to the next and go around. If you have not been attended to, don't sit down. Stand up on your feet and let them see you so that they identify you as quick as possible. Others begin to pray. The Lord is hearing your prayers already. Your miracle is for you tonight. You will have the touch of God. You will have the wonderful power of God in full manifestation in your life. Believe God tonight. Believe his words. Believe his promise for you. Believe his power. Believe also in the prayer of a servant. As you are preparing your heart, prepare your mind, something will happen to you. I say something will happen to you. Your miracle will come your way. And the Lord of heaven is waiting for you. His servant is waiting for you. You will have all that you have been waiting for, praying for, all these years in Jesus' name. So be praying. and say, Lord, tonight is my night. Tonight is night of my visitation. Tonight is a night of my freedom. Night of my healing. Is a night of my deliverance. Night of my blessing. 
You will not go home without having your own portion the Lord have reserved for you. As you are praying, ushers, counselors, leaders, I'm still waiting for you by my right hand side. If you have done, please, can you wave the flowers for us to see that you have done with the counseling in that your colors cluster. I'm still waiting. Okay. We have the flags raised up. We have it raised up there. Out of my left hand side. More people are there. If you are finished here, move down towards my left side. People are much there. Thank you. We have done with right. Done with upside here. Now remain center and the left. Many also are towards the gate. Let's attend to them. Even those outside there, let the ushers quickly, counselors, move to their places. Get them registered. As they have given their life to Jesus, we want to attend to them. Yes, let's move towards my left hand side. There are more over there. If you are finished, Am I seeing flag there? If you are finished, wave it for me. Thank you. At the extreme end, there is. Out of the front side, by my left hand. Okay, thank you very much. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Stand up as you receive your miracle. Praise the Lord. You stand up now as you receive your miracle. My miracle has come. Not on the basis of my crying, but on the basis for what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. And he said, it is finished. Somebody shout, it is finished. All your problems are finished. All your sicknesses are finished. And the moment we mention the name of Jesus, that infirmity, that sickness, that insanity, everything will vanish away. Tonight, I have a miracle. Tonight, I receive my healing. And... As we say the final amen, you check up on yourself, you see it is done. Amen. For, me. For me. For me. For me. In Jesus' name. Amen. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. There's no incurable disease before the Lord. The Lord is going to touch you, heal you, deliver you, and put a testimony in your mouth tonight. Ready? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know, we believe that all our sicknesses, diseases, infirmities, everything Finish tonight in Jesus' name. Signs and wonders everywhere tonight. Miracles here tonight. Healings and deliverances here tonight. Lord, I pray for everyone. You already took all their body away. And I pray there will be a realization a performance right now in Jesus' name. Any sickness, any disease, whatever the name, from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All the works of the devil in anyone, any part of the body, Lord, destroy Everything now in Jesus' name. Heal the sick. 
deliver the oppressed. Do a creating miracle in every life. And every desire of every supplicant asking, do this for me, do this for me, confirm it now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because we know you have done it. Your work will be manifest and revealed in every life right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is finished. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has done it for you right there. Check up yourself. Check up yourself. Don't be a spectator on looker. Check up yourself. It is done. For you. I said for you. I said for you. As you check up and you find what the Lord has done, you come, you have a testimony tonight. Amen. Amen.